Insight. The first ever series to analyze the unexplored aspects and issues of Carnatic music. Dear Rasikas, welcome to episode 5 of our Insight series. Today I like to begin my session with some beautiful quotes on music just for you to think about it. Music gives soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination and life to everything. Thus you see that music is very very important for our holistic well-being. Also I came across another beautiful quotation on silence which I'd like to share with you. Music and silence combine strongly because music is created with silence and silence is full of music. Well, today's topic itself is going to be on silence in music. 
I had talked about this in my earlier session also to show you how as much as melody is important to our music, the silence in between the melody is also very very important to enhance the effect of music. Here I would like to quote one of the eminent pianist Arthur Schnabel who has said that the notes I handle no better than many pianists but the pauses between the notes are that is where the art resides. This I am sharing with you because of the fact that many many great stalwarts have realized that silence is indeed a very very valuable element of music and you would have also if you observe keenly seen how the great maestros have used silence in the most exquisite manner to make their music absolutely beautiful. I would also like to share some aspects with you Rasikas before I move on to the subject. Some things to just think at random. As far as Carnatic music goes, though it is a very structured system which has evolved over many years, we also see that the Rasikas play a very very vital role in terms of shaping the growth and development of the music. And it is the Rasika who decides to a considerable measure the course of the music and the trends it has to be follow in order to be acceptable and appreciated. And in this context is what it's very important to remember that Rasikas really need to elevate their musical knowledge so that they can demand quality music from performing arts. Why am I saying this is because if you are not a knowledgeable Rasika, then you are often taken for granted and artists also do not go in pursuit of excellence if we do not have good rasikas to appreciate our music. So it's actually a two-way process where the artist or the performer works tirelessly to make his art an excellent form. But it should be remembered that while the performer tries to hone his skills and make his performance excellent, Unless there is a rasika to reciprocate this excellence, then the whole thing, the pursuit gets wasted. So that's where I said that it's very, very important for rasikas to elevate their knowledge so that they appreciate the hard work, they appreciate the excellence that artists strive towards. Again, this understanding should not be limited only to the main artist. Many a times I've also seen in concerts, since we are organizers for more than 25 years now, we mainly concentrate on what the main artist that is the vocalist or the flautist or the veena player is doing and we do not give that much of an importance when a violin is reciprocating that and playing an alapana or when the percussionist is playing a taniyavartanam. In fact, sometimes we feel very sad to see rasikas who think the taniyavartanam to be some kind of an interval and move out also. And they think that this Tanya Arthanam is actually unconnected to the whole music. But whereas, if you listen keenly, you would see how beautifully it's an extension of the music that has been created by the main artist. So here the appreciation, what I want to emphasize is that we have to look at the whole concert structure as one whole and appreciate. And you have to be very keen to understand what the vocalist is doing how the accompanists react to what is being presented by the main artist and that's where the experience of attending a concert becomes multifold. If we look at our lifestyle today, we see that it also has a very strong bearing on our music in the sense that in earlier times, the music we see was more in a relaxed pace probably because of the relaxed pace of life itself. We often hear our many senior Rasikas telling us how after having a nice dinner they would sit back to listen to a concert right at 10 p.m. in the night and concerts would go on as much as to 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. in the morning. This is something unimaginable in today's context because all of us are running and juggling with so many kinds of activities all the time. So even a two hour concert becomes a luxury for us today, in I mean in today's parlance. In film music also this trend is seen where we have seen that in the yesteryears there were enchanting melodies but today it has given way to a lot of 
peppy numbers. We see that uh, this is also reflected in the performance of artists where they resort to pacey music and a uh, lot of brigas, gamakas and try to make the music as entertaining as possible. Here we see that though traditionally a performer has learned from a guru, he has to change according to the times and that is how he can really survive and make himself acceptable by the music world. But again quickly I would like to add that this is not true of all musicians because in yesteryears we have heard of Brinda Mukta duo who had a strong conviction in their music and they cherished the values. So now they never really bothered about what the audience thought about their music and what their reaction was. And it was just like this is what I have to offer either you hear it or you leave it. In contrast, we also see maestros like Maharaja Pram Sri Santanam who has openly said that the audience mattered to him most and thus he tailored his music according to the taste of the audience. Thus we see that there are different kinds of musicians who hold different thoughts and views about music itself. Coming back to the subject of silence, it is important to understand how this aspect enhances the melody itself it may be in any kind of music. Let us talk about our own classical music now and see how this works. In a composition, first of all, the silence actually helps in dividing the segments in the sense that we have Pallavi, Anupallavi, Charanam. If there was no silence between these three sections, they would all be molded into one and we would never be able to identify each as separate segments. That's the first thing. Secondly, Silence also enhances our anticipation. Let's look at a small example of a composition to see how this silence plays a vital role. Gana Murte Shri Krishna Venu Gana Murte Shri Krishna Venu Gana Lola Tribhuvana Pala Pahi Gana Murte Shri Krishna Venu Gana Lola Tribhuvana Pala Pahi Gana Murte And after the silence, the Anupali takes off. Here again, the silence need not be always in the beginning or the commencement of the talam. For example, in this particular composition, you saw that the aridi portion had that silent element like Gana Murte Shri Krishna Venu Gana Lola Whereas the samam actually continued to lead that particular line into the next. So there was actually no concept of silence there. But later on you see that in this particular portion. And that silence in this particular portion of the Aridi is maintained throughout the composition and that gives some kind of a beautiful symmetry to the composition also. I would also like to take the small example of an alapana to show you how the subtle silences actually add that beauty to the whole structure itself. Now first I would like to just show you a few phrases which are clustered together. See how it sounds. That was Kiravani, but now I did not pause anywhere. So actually it was just some kind of phrases put together. Now I will be singing it in a more relaxed way, giving the right pauses at the right places. See how the effect gets changed. Hey, hey, 
ಸತದರ here you saw that the silence served many purposes first is of course to give that vishranti to the whole raga form the second is of course to give me that space to breathe that's also very important because after all singing is all about holding and giving out the breath so if you continuously keep on singing you cannot really hold your breath for long and then you will start panting for breath the third is of course the silence or the pauses also give beautiful spaces for us to expand the vistas of our imagination and finally of course from the rasika's point of view that small pause actually gives time for assimilation if i keep on singing one phrase after the other one on top of the other actually the rasika will not be able to enjoy it it is just like i would compare it to having a very very tasty dish suppose i take a rasagulla or a mysore pak if i am going to savor it slowly and eat it that experience is totally different now if i am going to take the same rasagulla about 10 or 20 at a time and try to push it down my throat at after a point of time actually i'll be choked and this is what i would say i also applies to music because after a point of time if there are too many things happening continuously one after the other the audience will not be able to assimilate and cherish what is happening on stage so that way the silence has got a multifold purpose to serve i would say and here i would also like to add about how the great maestros use this silence as a beautiful suspense element to come to the sa itself this specially you would have noticed in hindustani music where the artist hovers around the mandra sthai for a lot of time especially when they start the concert you'd see that the mandra sthai becomes the predominant area where they try to bring out a lot of patterns and uh, as you feel that the artist is going to reach the sa and going to attain the sa you see that he will not do that he'll come back to the mandra sthai again so there is a lot of suspense created in the mandra sthai and after a beautiful silence he goes and attains that sa in full form and that is really a, an enchanting aesthetic experience and uh, many of you would have observed that in our carnatic music also especially when they try to approach the tarasthai sa in our carnatic music a lot of phrases are created and then after a subtle silence when it goes and merges into the sa it is an absolutely out of the world aesthetic experience it is interesting to see how rasikas also react in different ways to the silence that is created by the artist here i would like to share an anecdote with you many years back i attended a concert in a large auditorium and it was totally packed with rasikas and the artist chose to perform tiruvadi charanam endru nambinen in the ragam kambodi and he sang it actually in a athi vilambita kala in the sense that it was truly in a very very slow tempo that he performed in a very relaxed gait i was thoroughly enjoying that pace of singing and he was accompanied by a very great maestro on the mridangam and this maestro he was so much a rasika of the music i could say that while playing 
he in fact abstained rather from playing in many places and resorted to keeping silent and uh, the silence between the sparse playing was actually charged with energy and it took us to a meditative mood a state of bliss i was really enjoying myself i would say not only to the main artist but also to the way the mridagam artist was trying to react to that particular music and keeping his playing very subtle and most often very silent also this is something which only very very experienced mridangist know to do because after years of playing to all the maestros they understand more about where not to play than where to play after the concert was over i was still reveling in that ecstatic music and i came out of the auditorium at that time i happened to see my friend and she came to me and said oh did you see how the mridangis was struggling to accompany the main artist it was really pathetic he did not know what to play and just kept silent for most of the time i really did not know how to react to this but then i also made it a point to explain to her that silence is not just about ignorance it is also more about being experienced and trying to understand how to accompany and how to nourish that particular music so why i wanted to share this particular thing with you is that rasika should also know that silence is very very profound as far as music is concerned and they should know to appreciate it at the appropriate points and places with this i come to the conclusion of this particular episode i have many more interesting topics for discussion with you if you do have any questions or doubts please don't hesitate to email or whatsapp to me thank you